Uh, now we come to the fun part of the proceedings. Um, we have a lot of questions, as uh, I'm sure all of you are well aware, and quite a few of you have sent in some very detailed ones. So, just to recap on what I said before, the very detailed questions that relate to specific cases uh, in relation to your own companies or organizations, uh, I don't think it would be fair for us to go into those, but we will engage to come back directly to the questioners themselves. We do, however, have Quite a number of uh, more general ones. Um, we're joined by Peter Johnson from the NDCC division and also by Anne Carrick from the uh, Import Control Division. And uh, the first question I think is for Anne Carrick really. Um, someone's just looking for some clarification and some clarity indeed on yellow routing. Yes, can you hear me, Tom? Um, I hope I you can, can hear, hear me. You perfectly, can you? thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. Just on this, as you know, most of our, our most people here will be familiar with this. That there's an inbox for yellow routing. So when you get a yellow routing for a composite product um, on your AIS system, then you need to notify us about yellow routings. And um, several things. Please do not do this for a, a product until such time as it is yellow routed up onto the system on the AIS system, because we are getting some that are done ahead of time. Um, and unfortunately, then maybe they don't end up being yellow rooted, which, as you can imagine, then is unfortunately taking up extra time. And um, so really the yellow routing, it does not become applicable until obviously the boat leaves the UK, at which point then you'll have your yellow routing uh, notification on the system. And then you need to um, email yellow routing at agriculture.gov.ie at that stage. Now, please also don't as well email our other two inboxes you know we have two more inboxes for various things we've our bcp inbox which is used for sort of general queries as is our import controls and um, typically what we're finding is people are emailing yellow routings to all three and as you can imagine then that results in more email traffic which then takes a little bit longer for us to go through so can i ask that you email yellow routings only if that's it's just a yellow routing one that you need clears, clearance on. Um, we're, we, we do get through them as quickly as we can for in the most case, it would be maybe 24 hours um, turnaround at the, at, the, at the most before one of our vets is in a position to email um, revenue to release that, 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 that truck. And as you know, we also email the agent so that they then are aware too that the clearance has been uh, received from us. Then that means that you only need to then concern yourself about whether or not customs are still holding it for something or maybe the HSE. Um, but you could be satisfied then that we've cleared it from a Department of Agriculture perspective. So I think that's just one point I just wanted to kind of come in on really, Tom. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that, Anne. And uh, if anyone needs any further clarification about that, they can of course email us or even get in your question on the uh, on the chat function now, and we will certainly come back to everyone on that. Now, just in relation to um, some of the more general ones, um, I'm just going to throw these open to the floor, if you like, and whoever feels best qualified of the panelists can come in and answer them. Um, one of the questions is, is a pretty general one. Is it one attestation per consignment or per product? Hi, Tom, I can take this one. So, yeah, look, there's there's nothing that we're aware of in the legislation that prohibits the addition of multiple products to a private attestation. Um, if this, Tom, would you be able to allow me to share a screen if possible? Yes, Tom? yeah, absolutely, yeah, bear with me now. So, so if it is to be performed that you're putting multiple products, then the product specific information that's required by point four and five of part two of the attestation. So I'm just going to share. Uh, okay. Can you all see that, Tom? That, perfect. So yeah, so the, the product specific information required by point four and five of the attestation, which is the ingredients. Um, of the process product normal origin and the plant origin ingredients listed in descending order with their percentage and also the um, approval number of the establishment of origin of the product of animal origin um, and the approval number if the manufacturing establishment is performing further processing of the product of animal origin 
they need to be provided in a really clear way so that the inspector at the border control post can link the information to each specific product. So as Paddy uh, said in the previous talk, the product name is vital to be able to link these. So in the first column there, I put the, the pasta sauce as the product name, then the ingredients, then the commodity, the product of animal origin that those ingredients um, contain, the approval number of the manufacturing establishment. So in this case, I've said that the manufacturing establishment does perform further processing. So I've provided the approval number. I've then given the approval number of the establishment of origin of the milk, and it came from two different approved establishments. That's IE456 and GB333. Um, and then also the country of origin is required, just so that, again, the inspector can easily check, yes, that's a listed country for the um, import of that product into the union. We um, we won't be, like, the, the only information that should be provided is that in those headings there. We don't want any additional information because this, you know, you can imagine when there's multiple products being added, the more information provided just gets difficult and incoherent. So it needs to be a really clear, concise, um, schedule and such as the example presented there and, and they're really the, the headings that we want to see. Okay, thanks. Okay, that's perfect Ruth, thank you very much. Um, uh, if a product is exempt from official controls, do they need to upload to INSOC or traces or can the documents just accompany the load? I don't know, maybe is that one for Norway? So again, the they don't need to update to IMSOC. IMSOC is for notifying the border control post. So if they're exempt from official controls, they just need to accompany the consignment to the point of placing on the market. Okay, thank you very much, Ruth. Um, someone is asking how it's possible for them to apply 24 hours in advance if they need to give them vehicle details because they may not know the vehicle. So again, Tom, the, the 24 hour notification, unless one of my colleagues in the port wants to take this. Nope, okay. Um, I, I can take oh. it, I, I can take it, Ruth. Yeah, it's Noreen. Um, so the, the, the 24 hours pre-notification, I suppose, is, 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 is really uh, pertains to generating the shed, okay? If you don't have the trailer number at the time of shed generation, then you can, you can go back into your shed as long as we've left it as new and you can update it accordingly once you once you have got your health search in hand or once you know which trailer number it is uh, you can update it accordingly um, we appreciate that the logistics are not always that easy um, but if, if that's the way it'll have to work that's the way it'll have to work so it's really give what information you have when you can give it that's the you're asking there, I think. Um, yes, but we we can't. I suppose that's a bit of a that's a bit of an open-ended comment in that we we need we need the details on the shed, but due to the logistics, we realise that uh, we realise they don't always have the trailer number or indeed the registration number. Um, most operators have a trailer number; they don't have the registration number. But look, we appreciate you don't always have it, so fill in what you have on the shed. Um, and you can go back in and put in the trailer number once you have it. Okay, thank you, Noreen. And Noreen, I think the next couple are for you, so we might as well keep you on the line there. Um, what are the costs of a shed? That's uh, one of the queries. Yeah, I can take that. Because so there, there is a fee per consignment, so a fee per shed. The base line fee is 55 euros per consignment and that is up to six tons and it increases I think it's nine euros per ton thereafter that fee is chargeable regardless of whether your consignment has a documentary and ID check only or has a documentary ID and full physical turnout in terminal 10 so regardless of the exam the fee is a baseline fee so it's 55 euros per shed um, up to six tons and consignments that are more than six tons will increase incrementally at nine euros a ton and that is billed to the RFC so the person who creates the shed which is why they must register with DAFM because they must be billable by DAFM for this uh, so that fee is charged to them and then they will pass it on to their importer 
Can I just add okay, also that, add here that the schedule of fees are available on the website at that link that you already gave earlier in the presentation, um, our Brexit page registrations on agriculture. So the schedule is actually published there at the fees. Okay, thank, thank you for that, Anne, and thank you for that, Noreen. Uh, another quite general question, what does INSOC stand for? Um, it's the, um, I don't actually don't know, I can't remember off the top of my head, Ruth will remember, it's uh, it's the import, it's the EU import it's field. Yeah, it's the Information Management System for Official Controls. Okay. So it's the new name good. for trade. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, does the actual personal attestation have to accompany a load or um, can the importer hold those records? As in, can the importer have them digitally, I think? Um, yes, I can take that. So, as per um, a reading from from the guidelines that that our policy division has given us, etc., the attestations can be created by the importer, so they may never be actually on the truck with the load, um, but they must. There will be the original will be with the importer and must make it to the marketing to to the place of destination. Um, we will not always see the original attestation at the border control post for that reason however if the attestation is created in the uk then it may well travel with it will travel with the load to the border control post in which case we will see it again that is only for the attestations that are created for commodities that are subject to import controls okay thank you noreen can i, can I, Tom, can I just come in there on that of course yes yeah, sorry so so the legislation states that the the document must accompany the consignment and um, but we're aware that there's significant logistical issues with that requirement and um, so we're saying where possible it should accompany the consignment however we will accept a pdf um uploaded to the imports portal and the the original should follow to the bcp as soon as feasibly possible okay thank you very much um I don't know if anyone knows the answer to this one, but are there any plans in the medium term to make pork uh, a BCP or a BIP? Mm. I, I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> there's significant yeah. costs um, and logistics involved in creating a BCP. It's not a simple process. Um, and I, I believe this has been posed and there would be, have to be a very strong business case input um, for the for the building of BCP, it's obviously significant resources, costs uh, to to run it, etc. So it it has it's uh, it's come to the attention of DAFM, and it you know we have issued a response to okay. applicants. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, let me see a couple of other more general ones. Uh, Do the same rules apply to imports into Northern Ireland as they do to the European Union? Yes, they do. So there is easements under the Northern Ireland Protocol which apply to products which will remain in Northern Ireland. But for product that is being imported through a Northern Ireland port for further movement to the Republic of Ireland, those are subject to the same import requirements. And this is possibly a slightly related one. Uh, if composite products are manufactured in the European Union and they're transiting the UK land bridge to the Republic of Ireland or Northern Ireland, are they exempt? I presume as long as they have a, a seal on the, on the container. Yes, Tom, they're, they're EU product. So they don't actually require a seal on the container. They can transit as a T2 transit um, which is EU to EU through a third country. So there is no EU requirements for such products. However, the UK have indicated that from October, they will require certification requirements for such products, but they haven't provided further detail yet. Um, in, in terms of the list of products exempt from entry via BCP, um, what does the term X mean? Uh, and the example that's given to me is X18069039. I don't know if that's too specific to answer. 
Nope, absolutely not. So what, what EX stands for means there is exceptions under that CN code. So you'll see that there's in, in that CN code list, there is a couple that have no EX in front of them. And that means that all products under that CN code are exempt. The ones with EX means that if the product complies with the other requirements, so it's shelf stable and contains no meat, then it is exempt from controls. So it has to comply with further requirements. It's not just a generic um, get out of jail free number as such. Okay, thank you. Um, this being a composite products webinar, this is a, an appropriate one because it's a kind of composite question. It's in relation to um, companies that are um, importing uh, products of animal origin um, that are being warehoused in the UK and re-exported. They're manufactured in the EU, warehoused in the UK, and then re-exported to the EU, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland. What attestation documents are they in, in need of in terms of their re-exportation? They're considered, they're considered imports like any other product from GB. So once an EU product is unloaded in a warehouse in the UK, it becomes, or it loses its EU SPS status. So therefore it requires certification or the private attestation for import back into the EU. Okay, thank you. And I'm afraid this one is probably for you again, Ruth, because I remember you mentioning this term during the presentation. Is there a specific definition for shelf stable? And if so, where can someone find that? Yeah, the definition for shelf stable is in um, the new delegated regulation, um, as I discussed, and it, it's, it's for products that do not need to be stored or transported under controlled temperatures. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I have a couple of slightly more specific ones, and if these are too specific, please just say, and we can engage with people directly. Um, vitamin D3. Uh, as it's derived from animal fat in its process, does that fall under the highly refined product definition, uh, like gelatin and collagen would? Tom, that'd be one we'd need to see the CN code proposed to import it um, and further product details. So that should be sent to the animal product imports um, okay. email address or Brexit code. Okay, we, we can we can deal with that one more specifically then. Um, here, here's a good one in terms of uh, filling out the correct documentation. If the list of ingredients in the product is too long to fit into one line, what should someone do? The form is editable, so you know, I don't see there's no restriction on one line required. So you can just keep putting in the information and it will accommodate it. Absolutely, Tom, yeah. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, just a couple more, um, because as I said, an awful lot of the questions we have are very specific. So we can go back to people individually in relation to those. Um, if an importer is on traces as a general importer, do they need to be re-registered as an importer of products of animal origin? Sorry, no, not that I'm aware of. I mean, Porter, are we talking about now for comp for, for people who are on composite, or is it, are we talking about just generally? So if they're if you're registered with on traces and with DAFM as an importer, you know you're an importer. So there would be no need in that instance to re-register. Okay, thank you very much for that, Anne. Um, here's another more general one. It's more to do with policy than anything else. Are there any concerns in relation to BCP capacity, uh, considering the increased number of private attestations that will now have to be checked? I, I suppose, Tom, I could take this one. Um, it, it would be an operational um, issue, but it, it has been um, taken into consideration. Okay, uh, and I know that there, there has been some uh, some recruitment done as well, so uh, that, that should address it in some way. 
Uh, the final one that I'll ask for now, because as I said, so many of these are actually, um, Hazel, did you want to come in there? Uh, well spotted, Tom. Um, uh, oh, I, I might see the been... boss lady coming in there, so, so yeah, we can, might as well can, let you come in. Yeah, can you, can you hear me, Tom? Perfectly, yes, Perfect. thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, I thought I might come in to answer that question about the capacity. Um, so just so people know who I am, I'm Hazel Sheridan, I'm head of um, import controls operations at, 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 at the ports and the airports. Uh, so just to say again, um, uh, we, we, you know, um, it's it's hard at this point in time for us to know uh, how many extra controls will have to be done, and it's one of those things that we'll just have to wait and see as uh, uh, the new rules come into play and 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 what that means in practice. We have plenty of spare capacity um, at uh, the various facilities at the moment, but again, we'll just have to wait and see how things pan out after um, uh, April 21, because uh, again. At this stage we're, we're talking you know in terms of the of the theory rather than the actuality so we'll just have to see what happens um, and, and see how we get on but at this stage we're not anticipating any problems okay thank you very much hazel and uh, i might actually let you have the last word there because uh, we're an hour and a half into the uh, the webinar we do have quite a number of other questions to deal with but as i had said we will deal with them uh, on an individual basis because some of them are quite detailed and you wouldn't really be in a position to engage with them now. Uh, it only remains for me to thank everyone who's attended, almost 300 of you, and there are still 240 of you online. So thank you very much for staying with us through the whole thing. Thank you very much to all of our speakers. And uh, I'm sure we will be um, bringing you some more webinars on, uh, on difficult questions that you have to ask us. And uh, we hope that, uh, that we're able to help you with, uh, with any queries. Thank you very much.